What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? I am your host, Brooks, and we got another HMO segment here for you guys today. I got Josh K and I got Mike Curry here today. Uh, why don't you guys go ahead and introduce yourselves? Uh, what's up, man? Josh K here. Uh, just just coming from same type of background Brooks came from, so uh, glad to be on the call. What's going on, everybody? I'm Mike Curry, host of Curry and the Pie Sports Podcast. Uh, I'm, I'm back. I'm excited to be back again with you, Brooks. Last time was cool, man. So I'm definitely excited for this one. Yes, sir. We got my we got a three Peter here today, actually. So uh, yeah, let's, yeah get, cool. let's get into this first topic, or let's get into this topic. Uh, over the weekend, Showtime released the uh, Basketball County in the Water uh, documentary. You know, Kevin Durant's a producer, Quinn Cook, Victor Oladipo. My first question for you guys is, what did you guys think of it? I loved it, man. I I take a lot of pride in, um, you know, my area. Like, before the documentary came out, you know, I'm not, you know, from those, you know, PG County itself, but, you know, that's that's had a lot of influence on me, you know, playing AAU ball and stuff like that. I can relate to a lot of the stories that they're telling. Um, so, I, yeah, I loved it. Yeah, same here, man. I loved it. Uh, the only thing I did wish it, it was a little longer. It was like Same. one minutes, you know, it was like 51 minutes. I was like, dang, man, I wish it was longer because I just feel like there's so much more to be told, you know what I'm saying? But uh, overall, though, I was, I was, you know, thoroughly impressed, and I was just genuinely happy that, you know, the rest of the world could finally see what we see, what we've been seeing for, you know, for, you know, the duration of our lives. So, and, you know, I also went to Damatha, so, you know, it was cool that Damatha was highlighted big time in there. Yeah, and, um, you know, you mentioned the fact that it was only 51 minutes long, um, you know, and we, and we have these all these documentaries out right now, like The Last Sense with 10 parts, mm-hmm. um, you know, and some other things. Like, our, like, just locally, we had um, the, what's it called, the Uptown, like the Wilson High School documentary coming out, and that was like five or six episodes itself, too. Um, but, you know, what did you guys think that they did really well with this documentary? What were the things that you came away really, really impressed with? Um, I'd say, honestly, I like how they kind of, you know, put things in segments because they're like, you know, like Mike said, there are a lot of things to cover. And um, that with that being said, you have to kind of give people a way to keep track of it. And I think that those segments were good. But at the same time, just like you said as well, like there wasn't nearly enough, you know, uh, just to, you know, cover the true history of PG County and not only the county, but the, the area, you know, in total. Yeah. Uh, the segments were cool because they did, like, literally break everything down. You know, Damatha had a segment. KD had a segment, obviously. Uh, Lim Bias segment was pretty good. I love that one. Yeah. Um, but it was cool, like, how, you know, everything was laid out. But I, just, I, I, I only wish it was a little bit longer, man. Yeah. So, Josh, uh, I know you were a Hoover back in the day. Did you ever get to play at, uh, at the run and shoot like they were talking about in, in the documentary? We used to play, so I, I played for uh, DC Elite, um, my AAU team, and we used to practice uh, in some middle, I forgot the middle school name in, in uh, Mitchellville, but once that, you know, some some so for some reason we had to always switch practice gyms and stuff like that, we used to always be at run and shoot, either for practice or sometimes games and stuff too, and man, just, just what, like, just exactly what they're talking about, you walk in, there's like, 50 basketball courts and it's just like uh you, it's just it's, it's like an amusement park feeling like you know it was amazing yeah mike did you ever get to i i did you ever get to hoop you know back in the day were you were you ever playing out there too yeah, i've been there man it's just it's so nostalgic once i heard about once i heard yeah. it, just, it just takes you back yeah and you you're a pg county native um you know what were the the rec centers or the, the parks that were near you that you used to go to? You got you got Lake Arbor Elementary, um, uh, the, I mean, a community center. You got Perrywood. You got Bowie City Gym, of course. Um, those are the oh, main Bowie City. Bowie City Gym is cold. I was there like two summers ago doing um like a DMV Elite AAU event that they had there all day. And I swear I've never been colder in the gym than in that one. <laughs> But, um, you know, the next thing I want to ask Josh, you know, you and I, we met at, at UMD for the um, for the state championships. 
And I think one thing that I wish they were able to explore was kind of like the PG four A stuff, along with the WCAC. You know, you had two area conferences, two area leagues that are really, really competitive and really, really fun to watch and cover. Um, you know, what were some of those things that if they were to cover that, that you would want to see in a documentary? Just just really honestly, I feel like honestly it, it didn't cover any of that at all. I, I'm trying not to, you know, put it down enough, but in terms of um, like PG 4A, I feel like it was really more of, it, it, it wasn't really about the public schools, about, you know, the WCAC and the impact. I mean, there were players on there who went to public schools, like, you know, Jeff Green and Northwestern and stuff like that. But um, I think that, you know, that that that's something that is, is well rooted in, you know, just Maryland basketball or this area's basketball within the, you know, the Beltway. And, um, uh, you know, public schools don't get a lot of love. For sure. And, you know, we, we actually had that debate not too long ago about was it all meta league talking about just you can't be a legend in, um, in the area unless you didn't unless you went to a public school. Uh, Mike, what's your opinion on that? My opinion on just what public school hoops. What was the question again? I'm asking, do you do you think that guy was correct? Do you do you did you have to go to a public school in order to be a PG County legend? No, nah, not necessarily. I don't think so. Um, I mean, growing up, a lot of the people like like a lot of like the um like the the, the legends you would say like you know Quinn Cook. He went to private school. You know KD. He went to Montrose and Oak Hill. Like. I don't necessarily think that you have to go to public school just to be a legend. I mean, that's no knock on public school. You know, you, you love public school too, but I, I still I still think the dude was wrong for saying that. Yeah, I think it's really honestly, I mean, I agree with you hundred percent. I just real I just feel like um it just is what it is. Like private schools just dominate the area. I don't know if there's an answer to it or if that's ever gonna change. Like yeah, that's how that's how it's you know how I I see how it's always been. You know. Mm-hmm. Now, Mike, you you went to the math. Uh, you were 2013 though, right? Yeah, I was 2013. So you were there during like right before the math that kind of like stepped off with the championship or WCAC wins, I should say. Um, what what are some of those memories that you have of like the Quinn Cooks being there, James Robinson, the Grants, um, you know some of those like BJ Anya. Yeah. Um, you know, what were some of those memories for you? Yeah, I could definitely touch on that because um, my freshman year, that was the year where Quinn Cook won um, All Med Player of the Year, um, and that's when they had the a- youngest ever to do it. Yeah, they had Quinn, they had James Robinson, they had Victor, they had Jaron Grant. Um, who else? Um, Jeremy was off the bench. Um, they had so many guys. Uh, BJ was just yeah. a in that year. And uh, they won it that year. They won the city title that year. Um, my junior year, I managed the team. So um, James Robinson was still there. Jeremy Grant was still there. Uh, Jarris Lyles was there. Um, BJ still on the team, of course. And uh, it was just cool managing the team, man. Although they did lose the championship that year, um, it was still, you know, fun just being around those guys, man. So, that, yeah, it was definitely uh, some great times at the Matha, man. I literally saw, like, the height. And then I kind of saw, you know, when things started to scale back a little bit. Now, shout out to, to Mike Jones, first and foremost, man. What was it like managing that team for him? Uh, I mean, Coach Jones was cool, man. He literally, like, I had sent him an email, like, I'm interested in being one of the managers. And then uh, he was like, come to my office. You know, we chopped it up a little bit. He's like, you want to be manager? He was like, at first he joked around. He was like, you got to try out. I was like, try out. <laughs> <laughs> But then uh, I just came. I just started like showing up to the um to the um workout to the tryouts, and then you know I uh, you know talked to the other managers, Luke, um, Luke Farrell, a um, couple of the other managers. It was four of us, and I was in charge of doing the video. But that that was real cool, man. Just being around you know everybody, the whole coaching staff, not just Coach Jones. You know you got um, Coach Cromer, Coach Vini, uh, Coach Anstead, a lot, all the coaches, man. It was just it was just a real fun time, good experience. Now, would you ever want to? Did you ever want to do it at like Louis State or anything like that? I don't want to say. That. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say no, but it's it's not it's not the same. It don't have the same 
It don't have the same aura, you know. It don't have the same the same luster. It don't, you know. what I'm saying the math of Bowie State, it just don't got the same luster. It's no knock on Bowie State. I mean, I would, but at the same time, uh, being a manager at the math was like something I really, really wanted to do. How many years were you manager there? I was only the manager my junior year. Oh, just that's still one cool. year. Yeah. That's still cool. I, I, so. What? So I'm trying to figure out if you. So do you remember a school named Don Bosco? Yeah, they. Lo- uh, I remember the um <laughs> team lost to Don Bosco. I think. Jesus. Um, a bunch of we we beat Ireton. We beat um we we played Carrollwell. Um, we played O'Connell Connellwell, but they pulled away. But we were we were competitive with the bottom with the bottom feeders in the in the WCAC. But this was our. My junior, my sophomore year, my last year there, we were, uh, you know, three years into being a school. Like we only had freshmen, sophomores, and juniors, you know. But I remember but that's. That Dang, I didn't know that she went to Don Bosco, bro. Yeah, bro, we we got blown out by that by that same team you talking about. <laughs> I didn't see the I didn't see the court versus the starters as much, so I'm not even going I'm not even going to sit here and say that you know like, you know, we did all that, but. They they their starters only played the first half. Man, that's crazy. Like yeah, it was it was funny and the W the whole WCSC. But to to bring a full circle, it wasn't just it wasn't just the math even. It was really the whole WCSC that year. And it wasn't like Kendall Marshall was was at O'Connell at that time. Um, Carol either had Rodney Magruder or Chris Jenkins, one of them. I, one of the two. I don't I don't know if it was both of them, but I know they had one of those guys. It had to be Magruder um, then. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Magruder. Um, you know, there was talent all around the league. And, you, you know, like, even Tyler Thornton was at Gonzaga. Even, like, Georgetown Prep had guys. Um, that that era, that was, like, you know, the the D.C. Assault, you know, era. And that's where guys were kind of spread out, too. And, um, you know, shout out to DeMatha because they, they dominated still. But, you know, that was, that was one of those times where, you know, basketball reigned supreme. I don't know if it's the same. Nowadays, how it was back then, but I'm also not 12, 13, 14 years old. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not as much as in tune with it as I yeah. was then. But yeah, that that was that was a time, man. That was definitely a great period, a great a bunch of you know great players, great talent, and like all over the place, like you said. Yeah. Now this this is a question for both of y'all. Um, what is it in you guys' eyes that makes PG County players so so tough, so competitive, so skilled? What is it that's that gives us that edge, or gives them that edge? I should say. Do you want to go, Mike, or you want me to go? Oh, uh, you can go. I'm still kind of thinking. Um, honestly, honestly, it's a, it's. I think it's a bunch of things. Like, and the the, the documentary really really touched on a lot of it. Like, one, you have all these kids that grow up with you know in a great. Uh, parks and recreation system so you know when you want to go out or outside it's just a basketball court it's not you're like you're, you're outside and there's a uh, like skating rinks and stuff like that like you know, I mean maybe there are somewhere but you, you know you, you get what I'm saying um that's that's one thing but at the same time what makes what makes it gritty is I don't know I feel like I feel like everybody everywhere is going through stuff but I, I feel like we we kind of take it take it differently. I don't know, and we especially take it out on the basketball court. Mm, uh, still kind of thinking, but like, um, I was watching. Uh, I think I was watching all the smoke yesterday. Quinn Cook was talking about it. He was talking about like, you know how like there's different like boroughs and stuff in New York, but like in DC, PG County, like it's it's close, it's close. And then like you said, the Rex, it's just. It's so many places to go hoop, and it's just like everybody's there. I can't really. I, it's it's kind of hard to explain. It's, hard, it's like yeah. it's, it's like it's like you gotta be from the area to like really you know, like to know to know what I'm saying. Like you know you get what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I'm not even satisfied with my answer. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man, it's it's crazy because you know like I'm I'm from Montgomery County, so is so is Josh, but like I feel like there's just a little bit more of a, a will, I would say. Like, they, they maybe they want it more. Or maybe it's maybe it's more important to them. Maybe I think I think part of it's the fact that it's either basketball or it's football, 
And then around here, we got like, we got basketball, of course, we got football, but then there's like lacrosse, you know, people play yeah, tennis, yeah. whatever it may be. There's more distractions here. I will say they, this, going okay. from, Bo- like, Don Bosco wasn't like in PG County, like deep in PG County. It's like, it's, it's in Tacoma Park, but it's like, it gets kids from, uh, you know, kids that would have went to Northwestern High School, kids that would have went to, went to like Coolidge and stuff. So it gets like a good mix. And being there and even, you know, playing teams in the WCAC and playing teams not only not only in the WCAC, but, you know, Riverdale Baptist and Rock Creek and those type of schools still, going to those environments, going to those schools and playing them, you know, you it's a different feel than, you know, playing at Einstein, playing at, uh, you know, Watkins Mill, playing at, you know, that, like, like, honestly, and, and, um, you can't really replicate that. Like, that's, that's, I feel like that's what we're talking about where, you know, you can't really put it into words. Definitely. Definitely. Now, one of those things that they did touch on was the whole Len Bias situation, him tragically passing away two days after being drafted. Um, you know, have you guys ever gotten to watch any of his highlights? I know ESPN put up a UMD versus UNC game. I, I guess the year, I guess, I think it was 1983. But, you know, what 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 are your feelings about him and, and the legacy that he's left behind uh, almost 30 years later, more than 30 years later? Uh, I can go. Um, I have I have gotten to watch some of his highlights, you know, definitely over the years. But, like, the way, like, the OGs were talking about Lynn Bias is, like, it's like he was everything is advertised. You know what I mean? Like he he had he had it, and you could definitely see it from the highlights. But I just feel like hearing like the stories from the OGs, they like it, it it the highlights don't necessarily do it justice. You know what I'm saying? Like everything they're saying is true, and I can actually give you a quick story. So, um, after Kobe passed, rest in peace to Kobe, my uncle he had called me the day after, and he was like, "I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. I'm really hurt." He was like, "But um, I, I feel how, I feel with you. How you feel?" Because when Lim Bias passed, he was like, I was crushed. He was like, that was like my superhero and stuff like that. So, like, he, he was everything is advertised. And I, I definitely enjoy watching his highlights, man. Like, he, he was freakishly athletic. He didn't have the best handle, but, like, he had the athleticism and he had a shot, too. So, he definitely had, like, the scary, like, arsenal. Yeah. I, I, I did get to see... Well, I actually didn't really know too much about Land Bias until um, that documentary, like, a few years ago. Like, I forgot when, like, I think we were in high school when it came out, the 30 for 30. 30 for 30, yeah. Yeah, and that's when I was like, oh, we really had somebody that was, that was, uh, like, you know, that pride that I've always, that you know, that I was just talking about, I've always had that and where I'm from. And I was like, oh, we had somebody that was on that level. You know, Red Arbach is singing his praises. Uh, Larry Bird is singing his praises. He's supposed to be the face of... Uh, uh, like one of like the most historic franchise, you know, coming up, and um, you know, I like went to YouTube and you know tried to see what I can find. Back then, it wasn't there wasn't as many as many highlights, but even still, I appreciate them actually dedicating the whole chapter to Len Bias because of the impact. Like he's basically, you know, our goat, like our you know the number one you know player of from PG County, from this area. Um, and that's just off of, honestly, we, we just were coming off the last dance. And that's, I feel like his status in our minds is based off what Michael Jordan ended up doing. And the fact that they were looked at, you know, on par, um, you know, with each other or, you know, you know, things like that. So, you know, I really like that they dedicated some time to Len Bias. I think... Yeah, I, I definitely echo you guys' statements, and it's, it's it's almost hard to believe some of the hype and some of the stuff that the OGs have been saying about him. Because, like, you know, how good could this guy have been? How great could he have been? How great was he at UMD? Like, it's it's almost like a myth. It's almost like a mythifying thing. Like, you think about him, you think about someone from Chicago, Ben Ben Wilson, who got killed too. Like, right. it's so much mystification. That's like so much myth and so much legend around you know guys like that who didn't get to play longer in but i want to ask you guys another question when the go-go came in and they were talking about players you know 
playing like uh like they were like they were cranking to those songs. <laughs> what, what, what did y'all think of that? <laughs> I mean, honestly, I was like, I I like that y'all incorporating it, but y'all could have came a little <laughs> the way they. I feel like that was a little a little smidge of cap <laughs> with the with the hezzy to the. Uh, I don't know if, if that's what you that's what you're immediately referring to, but like um, they were showing a highlight of uh, it was Ty Lawson and then yeah. like K- KD and they were like yeah when they it was Michael Beasley talking and he was like yeah you know when they hit that heads up it's almost to the beat you know the go go I was like I mean it's just the I mean I don't know if that's if that's what it is but <laughs> <laughs> but um, I. And, and all in all, like, I, I appreciated them having that in there, too, because that's another um, treasure that we have that doesn't get isn't doesn't get enough national uh, praise or attention. And, um, you know, I just I, I love that. Like, I love Gogo. I love, you know, the fact that it's, you know, part of this culture so much. Sure. Yeah. I thought I thought it was a little forced, but I was like, <laughs> him, like, easily saying that. But I mean. It's, it's it's still cool, like you said, Josh. That they pay homage to Go Go, man, because you know that whole Go Go era. It brings back, it brings back so many memories, man. All of those, all of those bands, man. Countless bands that I can name right now, but it definitely brought back so many memories. And it's cool, like you just said, that it, it's been like it, it got to be exposed nationally, like them talking about it yeah. nationally. So that was dope. For sure. Now I'm gonna wrap this up in a little bit, but I want to ask you guys, who would you have? County top five against anybody in the country. You said, say it again. Who in the county would you want to take? Like a, you you pick a five. Who would you want to take, and and play against anybody in the country? Go to like oh, New York, go to county? Chicago, go to LA. Say it again. Yeah, all time. Yeah, all time. I think KB on them buys is the locks. Yeah, of I feel like where it get hard is is the guards. Point guard, point guard, shooting guard, even. Ooh. Ooh. Um. Ours is definitely tough. Yeah, it definitely is. That's tough. Because we've always have had guards. We've always had guards. Always have and always will. Ooh. And even with uh, Lamb Bias and KD being a lot. You on the Mount Rushmore's, you got to put somebody like Adrian Danley on the Mount Rushmore's. Mm-hmm. Very true. You know, Hall of Famer. What was it, six time All Star, something like that? Like, um, I don't know if he's on my five though. I'm just, I'm just, yeah. I'm just, you know, adding him to the conversation. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's a hard, it's a hard thing. Um, what you got, Brooks? Man, definitely Len Bias, definitely KD. Get, definitely got to put those two in there. I feel like Michael Sweetney, maybe from Oxen Hill back in the day. That dude was a he was a dog, he was, and he was able to. He went to I can't remember where he went to college, but you know he's a lottery pick. Um, what's his name? Jamar too that they had in the film. We gotta have him in there too. But then it's like it's hard to judge the the modern players too, but. Gun to my head, yeah. KD, Len Bias, definitely. Maybe I, I think I put in KD or not KD. I'm, I'm talking about uh, Quinn Cook. Mm-hmm. I was thinking, I was thinking. Is Rod, is Rod Strickland from uh, PG or DC? Where is Rod Strickland from? Strickland from? Isn't he from New York? Yeah, I thought Rod Strickland was from New York. Okay, yeah, because might be lunch. I think, I think him and uh and Kyrie's dad were were like close back in the day and all that. That's why um he plays like him. Maybe Markel. You could throw. I would probably throw Markel in there too. I was like high school. Yeah. Mar- off the high school legend. Yeah, high school college. Yeah, got yeah. Uh, I don't even know if I'll put Quinn over Ty Lawson. I don't. I mean, I probably honestly high school wise, I didn't see Ty Lawson. High school, I know Quinn was Quinn was wild, but just overall. I think I might take Ty. So Ty at the at the point guard. Yeah. 
That's oh, Michael it. Beasley. We're not even talking about him. That's I was gonna say Beasley. Yeah. yeah. You think he'd be a big guard? He was cold back then. Man, what? <laughs> Bro, especially at Kansas State. Oh my god. <laughs> um what do we have? We have So you have Ty Lawson, you have Bees, KD, and Len Bias. So I need a uh, for real, for real. Uh, Exactly, yeah. This is hard. <laughs> I can keep yeah. it small and just have that. I have B as my five. Honestly. Huh? Yeah, honestly, you could. Yeah. Because we got too many guards to, to pick a, not another big man, to be honest. Facts, facts, facts. I probably have to put Vic for real. Oh, yeah, Victor. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think I put I put Victor on my tail. Yeah, I take yeah, I take yeah, I take give me I take Quinn Victor. Give me yeah, give me Beasley, KD, and Lynn Byers. I take that five. And off the uh, bench, give me like give me like uh, Udrey Branch was tough too. That's another one back in the day. Udrey Branch, yeah. So many dudes, man. Yeah, it's it's hard to want to not want to the. Uh, to stump people too. To stump people too. Yeah, for real, exactly. I think Ty Lawson, Bees, KD, and Bias, and then Vic is a good lineup too. That is that's just like a lot. That's a lot of shooting. That's a lot of playmaking and all that. Yeah, uh, that's a lot of grit. We were just talking about too. Like, Hell yeah. Yeah, I feel that. You got you got any you got any you got enough. For a five of like the younger generation, like the people that are coming up now, kids. coming up now. I mean, coming up now. I mean, you gotta think about. You gotta talk about like Markel for sure. You gotta think about Chris Likes, mm-hmm. Trevor Kills. Yeah, Trevor Chris Kills. Likes. I see him being a killer. Trevor Kills Ooh. is already a killer. Trevor Kills. Oh yeah, him too. I think yeah, I think he's gonna be a killer. Um, yeah, and Alvin too. Yeah. And- and Cowan definitely here. Yeah, you gotta have him in there. Uh, who else? Mm. Oh man, I was thinking about T. Will, Terrence, Terrence Williams from Gonzaga. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a lot, man. Good, and that's not even talking about the public school kids. Public school kids too. Yeah, like, too. Yeah. Uh, Ronnie Polite out in um in Oxen Hill. You had uh, Daniel Oladipo from Blade. From Blade. Like, there's a bunch of yeah, yeah, modern yeah. schools that could, that could be anybody. When I was coming out of Einstein, it was Roddy Peters at, uh, I think it was at, like, Suitland or something. I might yeah, he was at Suitland. Yeah, oh. And Deion Wiley, too. Yeah, Deion Wiley. Yeah. yeah. 2014. And don't even, we can't even forget about Melo. Yeah, Melo's trouble, yeah. He, at all, for real, he can't. Like he took the. He, I feel like O'Connor wouldn't be what they are, um, you know, if it wasn't for Melo, for real. I mean, yeah, they, uh, uh, their coach is a good. Co- I forgot, the, you know, bloodlines over there, but, um, you know, yeah, Kendall Marshall and then Melo Trevor came over, took over everything. But all right, guys. So any other. Uh... Major takeaways to give to the to give to the peoples. If you haven't watched it, man, go watch it. <laughs> nah, for real. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. Also, d- take notes, do your research, because there's way more people to know. There's way more schools to know. Um, you know, learn more about the whole area. Um, I definitely, even being from Montgomery County, I definitely put PG at the. You know, that's the bar. And you know everybody else is chasing that, is is, is trying to get there, um, <clears throat> but at the same time, like it's it's a lot of people that, you know, even you can even go up to up ninety five to Baltimore, and that has a lot of history in itself. And you know, just the, I get, I feel like PG versus Baltimore, you know, for the state, you know, it's always PG versus Baltimore for the state. Delaney versus uh, Rose the other the other year, um, you know, stuff classic like, game, classic game. game. Um, but yeah, exactly. It's it's a lot of rich basketball history in this area. 
All right. Thank you guys so much for your time, man. HMO. Got uh, Josh K. We got Mike Curry here talking about basketball county in the water. Thank you guys like, once again for your time. And we are out. Bang. Peace. My guy or gal, thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, hit the notification bell, and share this video for the latest on sports, progressive politics, and pop culture. Slap.